Morning everyone and welcome to the Breeding and Reproduction Board. And I'm, my name is Donna Berry and I'm here with my colleague Stephen Butler. Now we're going to give you a very high level breeding and reproduction talk. There is a breeding and reproduction village uh, and I invite you to go down there and interact with the researchers one on one to dig in a little bit more detail into some of your questions. So just to start off, look, you can't really have a breeding board at Moor Park Open Day without talking about the Economic Breeding Index, or the EBI. And the EBI is the most validated, the most scrutinized breeding index globally, be it analysis of databases, next generation herd, whatever. And what we're clearly seeing is that an improvement in genetic merit is equally translating to an improvement in performance. Just to give you a, a, an example, over the last 10 years, the genetic merit for milk solids production of the Irish dairy herd has increased by 22 kilograms. Now those of you that remember my talk 10 years ago on this very board, I put down the gauntlet of achieving five and a half lactations in the next 20 years. And we're achieving that. We are now at 4.7 lactations per cow and we have increased 0.27 lactations in that last 10 years. So we're increasing yield per lactation and also milk solids yield per cow. Economically, when we've done plenty of open days and plenty of discussion groups, what we tend to do, irrespective of where we are in the country, we will look at those farmers' individual data, relate their profit monitor data to EBI, and consistently Irrespective of country, location, we are consistently seeing a one euro increase in profitability in EBI equates to, as expected, a two euro increase in profitability. The EBI has to be future proof. So the bulls that you've selected a few months ago, really their genes aren't being expressed for several years. And a lot of the time in 10 to 15 years time, their genes are still being expressed. So it's crucially important that our EBI or our breeding index are future proofed. So every year, and this year is no example, we look at what are the, the changes that are going to happen in prices and costs, for example, and we will update our EBI accordingly. Now the EBI is one single figure and it's, it's collapsing a massive amount of information into that figure. But it also is made up of individual sub-indexes. So farmers can individually put more selection pressure on fertility or on health over and above the EBI, but still within the context of the EBI. And tuberculosis is a great example, TB, really topical at the moment. So we know that 12% of the differences of whether an animal will succumb to TB or not, they're due to genetics. So if farmers are particularly concerned about TB, what they can do is they can put specific emphasis, more emphasis on the TB genetic evaluation, that's a low TB value of a bull, within again that framework of the active bull list, the high EBI bull list. However, and look, it's, it's, this is a good time to, to open up the conversation about how are we going to maximise genetic gain sustainably into the future. Stephen's going to talk a little bit about sex semen and sex semen is kind of thrown a little um, a distraction for us in that farmers are now mating their highest EBI cows, they're genetically the best cows, the ones that used to be producing these bull calves, they're now using or mating those with sex semen. Also intellectual property on bulls and also there's a tendency for farmers to not use as much Gene Ireland test semen. Again, tending more to use the sex semen. So the question and it's something that we have to look into a little bit more is what is the future breeding model going to look like in the context of a change towards sex semen for example. I talked a bit about the EBI and future proofing it and I said we have updated the EBI this year. We have changed the weights on the individual traits very slightly. So this is the EBI as it will stand in September. The other major change is what's called the base change. So what has happened is we have changed the base cow from born in 2005 to those that are born in 2015. And what the impact, it has no impact whatsoever on the ranking of bulls or the choice of bulls. But what it will do is that every single animal, cow, heifer, calf, AI bull, stock bull, will drop by 91 euros. And that'll be made up of 41 euros drop in the milk sub-index and 50 euros drop in the fertility sub-index. So what this means is that the, 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 the values that you had in your head of what was a good EBI or a good fertility or a good milk, milk sub-index, you're gonna have to rebase them come September. And you can see as well is that the bulls that were previously, said, let's say 100 kgs in milk, are now going to be 26 kgs in milk. 
On that, and a related topic is the maintenance sub-index. So this is relates to the size of the cow. This is also being rechanged. So what I'm showing you here is the expected actual data, the weight of cows in mid-lactation, the red is first calvers, the blue is mature cows for their different maintenance sub-index as of September. It's going to be the new maintenance sub-index. So a maintenance sub-index of zero, that equates to a first calving heifer calving down at 500 kilos or a mature cow calving down at 630 kilos. For every 10 euro increase in maintenance sub-index, that'll equate to, on average, a 20 kilo uh, lighter animal. And finally, I just want to finish off with this graph, and this is really in the context of dairy beef. I think when farmers are selecting their beef bulls, a lot of them are really concerned about the calving difficulty. Are these bulls going to be more difficult calving? Important to remember, there are two calving difficulty proofs available. Blue, there's a calving difficulty for uh, how, how difficult it's going to be calving on cows versus how difficult it's going to be calving on heifers. And I'm showing you here, this is the actual calving difficulty of the progeny of individual bulls, and this is their genetic merit some previous years. The lines here, this is at 3%. On average, dairy farmers are using bulls that are 3% calving difficulty on their cows and 7% calving difficulty on their heifers. And what you can see is that that is actually translating almost exactly to those progeny 3% of the time requiring assistance or, or having difficulty. So the really, just before I hand over to Stephen, the real summary I want you to take from this is you all have in your own head a calving difficulty that you were happy with for your Holstein Frisians. And it might be 3%. Well, you can use that exactly the same metric when picking beef bulls. Bearing in mind also that some bulls will have lower reliability so that their true calving difficulty might actually be different to their expected calving difficulty. So I'm going to hand it over to Stephen and then we'll have an opportunity for time for questions at the end. Okay, thanks Donna. So Donna mentioned the recent rollout of Sexeben and the amount of it that's being used now. So the first thing I'm going to do is put some figures on that. So that's what this graph here is showing you. It's the trends in AI usage over the last four or five years. And bear in mind that in 2021 breeding season, there was no Sexeben lab in Ireland. So the, there was a limited amount of semen available, limited bulls available, and, and really the, there wasn't great opportunity to use a lot of it. So in 2021, conventional dairy semen was about a million inseminations. And at that same time, sex semen was only about 60,000 inseminations. And over the last years since then, sex semen usage has tripled to over 180,000 inseminations in that time. And conventional dairy has declined from just under a million to uh, over just over half a million, right? So almost halving. And at the same time, this has facilitated beef AI to, again, almost double. So right now, beef AI is greater than the usage of conventional dairy AI. And that's a remarkable change, all facilitated by the usage of sex semen. I should have said that this data here is what's available in the ICBF database. There is some data that's not, not included in this. Now, important to note here that if we add up all the sex dairy inseminations and all the conventional dairy inseminations, there was a potential yield of about 270,000 female calves from those mating events. And if we move on to 2024, and again, add up the actual usage of sex dairy and the actual usage of conventional dairy, the yield of heifers was only 220,000. So even though sex semen is now available, we're actually generating fewer heifers. And there's a shortage of heifers being generated now nationally to, to sustain the national herd and to allow farmers to realize true genetic gain. So this dashed purple line here, that's what's indicating what should have been used in terms of sex semen to sustain this ability to generate 270,000 female calves in this subset of the national data. So we should have been about 280,000 sex semen straws, so more usage was required, a greater uptake was required during that time. Of course, sex semen does what it says on the tin. Every pregnancy you get is 90% chance of a female calf. And you can see here in 2022 calving, when there was very little sex semen used the previous year, 423,000 male dairy calves born the following spring. Of the dairy calf crop, 48% were male. And since sex semen has come on board, these figures have gone down, down, down. So 2024, we're under 300,000 male dairy calves born now, and it's just over 40% of the, the, the dairy calf crop. And we expect that these will continue to decline in the years ahead. As more sex semen is used, there will be continuing decline in the number of male dairy calves born. And that, that's a win for the dairy industry because they're being displaced by better value beef cross calves. Okay, so in terms of the actual usage of sex semen, there's a lot of information in the village on how to, you know, maximizing performance by selecting a, an appropriately sized bull team, 
identifying the best fertility dams, and then on the day of AI itself, the timing of AI, straw handling, whether or not you implement synchronization, there's lots of information on that in the village, and I just don't have time to get through it here. The last year that we have performance data that we can actually look at and analyze is 2023. So if we look at 2023 performance, validated and backed up by 2024 calving events, we can tell you that sex semen is being primarily targeted at heifers. Within the cow herd, it's being targeted at the better EBI cows, and it's being targeted at the early calving cows. These are all appropriate things to do. Farmers are selectively breeding their best EBI dams, like Donna mentioned, with sex semen to facilitate genetic gain within their herd. How is it performing? So here on this bottom graph, I'm showing you the, 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 the conception rates for conventional semen in blue and the sex semen in pink. So we have it separately for heifers and for cows. And now this data is, is large field data, thousands of herds, tens of thousands of insemination events. And you can see here that in general, sex semen is 93% as good as conventional in heifers or 87% as good as conventional semen in cows. So at this stage, this is an acceptable level of performance. It's going to continue to improve in the years ahead, but right now, this is delivering real genetic gain and having a desired impact in terms of male dairy calf births on Irish farms. Okay, so Donna mentioned this. Sex semen is facilitating this, but it's also causing a problem here in that the usual source of very high EBI male dairy calves is rapidly drying up. So where are they going to come from? So we, we, can, we can rely on a combination of existing technologies and new technologies to achieve that. One existing technology is simply contract matings. And that could be a contract mating with Y-sorted semen to give a male calf. And if you as a farmer are invited to mate one of your best EBI dams with Y-sorted semen as a contract mating, you should, be, you should facilitate that. You should be, you know, take ownership of the, the, the national genetic gain picture and be part of it. You know, use your herd to facilitate some of that genetic gain. But we can also try and go one, one, one harder here, and that is use new embryo technologies to generate multiple pregnancies from our elite dams. Now, when you think of an elite dam, you're going to think of your best cow. But actually, your most elite dams are your maiden heifers, and actually, even beyond that, the calves that were born this spring, your female calves that are currently three or four months old. And nowadays, it's possible to harvest eggs out of, out of your elite cows, but also your maiden heifers, and even your calves that are not yet even pubertal Harvest oocytes from them, fertilize those in a lab with using semen from an elite bull. That could be sex sorted as well to give us either males or females. Um, culture that in a lab for seven days and then take those embryos and transfer them into a cow that we don't require to generate replacements. And the upshot of this is from our very elite dams over here, be they cows, heifers or even calves, we can generate multiple offspring in a single breeding season. And that maximizes your chances of achieving genetic gain. So one of these is likely to be, to be you know, truly an elite calf and potentially serve as a future AI sire. Uh, I want to mention the national DNA genotyping strategy. So 40% of the cows in the country are now enrolled in this. Um, and, and currently, that, the, the herds are currently being accepted into that pro program again. There's more information on the national gen genotyping strategy and the advantages of that in the village. And also heat detection technologies. Again, about 25% of the cows in the country are now wearing some sort of an activity collar. And you know, farmers buy them because of the advantage they get in terms of heat detection. But there's also a lot of extra information in terms of health and also identifying the most fertile dams. Again, lots of additional information on that over in the village. So some take home messages. Selecting your bull team. Use Herd Plus. There's useful tools available to you to help you identify that bull team and allocate them to dams. Herd fertility sub-index, what's our target? So traditionally we've talked about 100 to 120, but after September, that's going to be 70 euros. Don't I mention the base change? We're taking 50 euros off the fertility sub-index. So after September 25, the new fertility sub-index target will be 70 euro. Are you using enough sex semen? You need to allow at least two sex semen straws for every heifer calf you require. And here's a chilling statistic for you. Have you enough heifers? So one in every four heifers born never becomes a lactating cow. So think about this when you're deciding how many heifer calves you want born because one in four of them nationally are not making it to become lactating cows. Okay, thank you for your attention.